Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scripture for July the 19th. Your readings for today find you in 2 Chronicles chapters 1, 2, and 3, Romans chapter 6, Psalm chapter 16, and also Proverbs verse uh, chapter 19 verses 20 through 21. Now, uh, normally when we start new books, I, in this case, Second Chronicles, um, I would give you an overview, but we already did that. You'd need to go back and look at the introduction of First and Second Kings to get an idea of First and Second Chronicles. And uh, Second Chronicles is now going to highlight a lot of Solomon's type stuff. We spent all the First Chronicles kind of looking at David, talking about David. Now you're going to go in and take a look at Solomon. But we got to go to Romans 6, because finally, finally, we're going to get the answer to the question, why? Why do we follow the law? And I, I, I want to ask you a question. Do you have things in your life that you have to do, but you don't look at them as obligations? You look at them as get-tos. For example, maybe you're someone who likes to cook. Well, reality is we have to cook. We have to do things to live. We have to eat food, and cooking is a necessity. But you might look at it as a get-to rather than a have to. Or maybe you're someone who likes to get your hands dirty and so doing work around the house or working on cars or something like that isn't so much an obligation as a something you enjoy doing. Well, that's how Paul wants us to look at the law, as something that we get to do, not something that we have to do. And that's what he's going to talk about here in chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? In other words, Paul's made the argument that we're no longer bound by the law. So now can we do whatever we want? And Paul says in verse 2, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it any longer? In other words, you, you look at this and you think, ah, you know, I'm now that I have Jesus, I can do whatever I want. And suddenly you find that you don't want to do it anymore. It's kind of like realizing you're an adult and you can eat all of the ice cream that you want to eat, but you don't really want to eat all of the ice cream. You you know that there's it, it it's empty. It it makes you feel less than. It makes you feel like oh this is not this is not good. And so Paul is saying there's an emptiness that comes if you try to continue to pursue that life. But because of that though. We still have obligations, but these obligations look a little different. And that's what he starts talking about in verse 15. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? Remember, Paul talked about the sin, but now he's bringing it to the law because the law reminds us of sin. By no means, verse 16, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you're slaves to sin, which lead to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. In other words, we have changed who our master is, but we are no longer under a master who is oppressive, who is is uh, is basically doing everything they can to tear us down. This would be sin. Instead, we are under a master who has saved us, who has brought us up from the mire, from the death, and has given us everything. And in fact, no longer are we slaves, but Jesus himself says, I now call you brothers. I now call you sisters. I now call you my family. We have been turned from servants of and slaves of sin into now heirs and co-heirs into family of God. And so then what benefit do we reap from this thing? Well, Paul answers that question in verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. We follow the law out of gratefulness. We follow the law out of gratitude. We follow the law because we get to follow the law because the law is representative of God. Remember, Jesus came and he said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. In other words, the law points to God. The law points to the holiness of God. And now that we understand the holiness of God, we can follow the law because we get to. We follow the moral code found in the law not because we we want to save ourselves, which is what the original intent of sin was, or excuse me, the original intent of the law was, but now we follow the law because we have been saved, because we now recognize the value of it. It's it's important. We we do this a lot in our lives where we see the value of things and we do them because we recognize the value of them. Uh, we don't always enjoy them, but we see the value of it. Our sinful nature is not always going to enjoy us following the law but we see the value in it, so we do it. It's like brushing your teeth. Let's be honest, there are times when you don't want to brush your teeth. 
but you do it anyway because you recognize the value of it. You recognize the importance and the healthiness of it. We follow the law because we get to. And even those times when our sinful nature goes, I don't really want to do this, we, we ignore our sinful nature. We press on because we see the value in it. We see now that the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, that's it for today. We'll talk more next time.